In this video, we'll show you an overview of Model Designer Preprocessor to T Navigator. Now we can start working from initial geological data to build static model or load rescue files with grid, porosity property, well trajectories. Or we can start from existing model in E100, E300 format. At the end, we will have static and dynamic model in one window. When we update the initial data, the dynamic model is updated as well. First, we start the demonstration of the workflow starting from initial geological data to build static model from scratch. We chose the coordinate reference system. The coordinate system can be chosen by country or EPSG code. And for each coordinate system, we can see the details about its zero points and ellipsoid. After that, we come to well trajectory loading. All standard formats of well trajectories are supported. Use preview panel to see the columns in the file. So the wells have been loaded and visualized immediately on 2D and 3D view. Set visualization settings. Now we're loading well tops. In model designer, well tops can be set on the well section or can be loaded from the text file. In this example, we're loading top and bottom markers. Then we can edit them, set visual parameters on 3D view, set colors, choose scale. Now let's load well logs. Standard last file format is supported. Logs can be visualized in 3D view as color columns. We can see the palette with histogram of parameter distribution. All loaded data can be edited in the table format. For each well, its trajectory is available to open separately. Well tops and logs. All data can be edited in this table. Now we start to work with well correlation on well section panel. Choose the wells we need and their logs. Different visualization settings are available and aligned. Curves can overlay or be displayed on separate panes. Standard lithology palette is available. Points visualization, color stick, or solid rectangles and others. Check well tops in the list to visualize them. Well tops can be set or edited on the wall section panel. We can see the depth dragging the marker. Then we can add a new marker and set it in the depth we need. The same way we can set the group of well tops. Set well tops according to the log data. Now all modifications are saved automatically in the designer project. Now, let's load the seismic horizon that will be used as trend to create top and bottom horizons. Seismic horizon can be loaded in the standard CPS format. Set visualization properties on 3D and 2D view. Palette is available to show the depth of this horizon. On 2D view, we can use coloring by contour lines. Set colors, number of contour lines, and inscriptions density. Now we come to top and bottom creation. Different interpolation methods can be used. IDW, Crygene, Gaussian simulation, 
least squares method. We create top and bottom horizons using the trend horizon and well tops for top and bottom. Then let's load faults. Faults can be loaded as rules, surfaces, or can be created in designer using polygons. Now we create the 3D grid via top, bottom, and faults. Choose the top horizon, bottom horizon, and the method, proportional, along top or along bottom. Choose the faults and set it if they are structural or not, and the distance of fault influence on grid. Click Auto Detect Bounds of the grid using the well data and horizons and start grid building. The 3D grid has been created for our model. Uncheck Fault Visualization to see that grid is built taking faults into account. Also, we can see the zones to which the model is divided by faults. Now we come to Facial Analysis. We create the Facies property. Facies log can be loaded or build in the calculator. Choose the existing Facies curve and interpolate it to the 3D grid. The Facies property is ready. Using Palette Filter, we can visualize only zones that we are interested in. Next, we can create a filters in Calculator to select different zones of Facies property. In these zones or properties, for example, porosity can be created using different interpolation algorithms or one algorithm but with different parameters. We create first and second zones using filters. We will need variograms to use 3D interpolation methods. Crygene or Gaussian simulation. Isotropic or anisotropic variograms can be created. Edit variogram parameters using slider. Create anisotropic variogram the same way. Let's start to build porosity property. Choose the interpolation method and the log curve and build porosity property in one zone. Then for the second zone, use another method or change the parameters of the method we already used. So we see the different zones or porosity according to the facies. Property analysis on model cross-sections can be done the same way as in T-Navigator General Window. We make a cross-section and switch to its 2D view. Then let's calculate permeability in the calculator. Use the formula to calculate permeability from porosity. Also permeability along Y and Z axis. Now, I'll show the workflow when we start from rescue files exported from the third-party software. There are grid, porosity, and well trajectories. First, we load existing rescue files with grid, porosity, and well trajectories. And then we calculate permeability using calculator. Now we start to add dynamic data, and we can model PVT experiments in the designer. The components can be chosen from the available list or can be loaded as a text file with their properties. Critical temperature, critical pressure, molecular weight, and other. Then we can build saturation pressure curve and phase envelope. Start any of the standard PVT experiments, differential, liberation, expansion.
constant composition expansion, and constant volume depletion. So we get phase PVT properties, density, formulation volume factor, viscosity, build PVT tables. They can be exported in files or can be used in current designer project to build the model. PVT tables can be also built using standard correlations, set default parameters, create PVT tables. Then parameters can be edited. Set rock properties and phase relative permeabilities using Cori or LET correlation. Set equilibrium parameters, contact depths, reference pressure and depth. Now let's load well history tables. Use preview to check your table data and assign the column names according to your data in the file. Then the data can be edited in the table on the right. Now we load well events. Use the preview to select the columns we need. Skip columns if necessary and edit then data in the table form. Set well control modes and limits. Use historical limits or define the values. Then we can change the value for each parameter to any well independently in the table. Set economical limits, for example, maximum water cut, gas oil ratio, and other. Then we set time steps. Load time steps from history and events tables or create any time steps you like. Now let's make well groups. Create the group hierarchy and then assign wells to groups. See on the right the hint to which group the well belongs. Immediately after that we can visualize the historical graphs from groups and for wells. Now we prepare a hydrodynamic model in the same window with initial geographical model. We can see pressure, saturation maps at zero time step, and oil and gas in place. We can see resources statistics, sum of oil in place for the field, and mobile oil and gas in place. Local grid editing is available. We can use this option if we have the new well perforation data and need to update model locally without full grid rebuild. Choose the radius and move the grid up or down. Use undo and redo buttons. We can start model calculation in the designer window. The time slider is moving and the calculation results are available on graphs. Any graph templates can be created. VFP tables can also be loaded. Move time slider to see curves with different parameter values. Then Assign VFP tables to wells. A new well can be added on the cross-section. Click on the map to make well trajectory points. 
They are added automatically to the list. Open perforations. The new horizontal well is created. Now we can add local grid refinement near wells. Set refinement parameters and create LGRs. Now we can visualize only LGR blocks. Let's add an aquifer using 2D Polygon. Select a region where we would like to connect aquifer with the polygon. Then we create an aquifer. Choose the flow direction. Aquifer visualization is available on 3D. Set aquifer properties. It can be Fetkovich or Carter Tracy. Thank you for your attention. Enjoy working with T Navigator and see other training tutorials for more details.